right, seventh grade, lesson 101. This one is on translating expressions into equations. So basically, um, what you're going to do today is you're going to read um, a sentence, and it's going to kind of be like a mild word problem. And you have to convert it into an equation. So, for example, if I said twice a number, basically I'm saying two times a number. Twice a number, this is the equation, two times a number. Okay, let's come up with another. Five more than a number. Five okay. times a number? Well, this, one's, this one says twice a number, so this one's five more than. It's actually going to be plus five. So we have a number, and it's five more than that number. Okay? All right, let's look into another one. Uh, three less than a number. What would I do? Minus three. Yep, so n minus three. Three is less than that number. Good job. All right, what about half a number? Divided by two. Yep, n divided by two. Good job. I couldn't do that. All right? This one might be confusing to you, but if you think about it, it's not. The product of a number and seven. The product of, what does product mean? Do you remember? Some? Uh, it's the answer to a, a division problem. Almost. That's what, yes, very good. Okay. So when it says the product of, it's basically saying multiply. Multiply what? A number and seven. So it's always good to put this kind of like in a, kind of separate these two. Because this basically says multiply a number and seven. So we're going to go number times seven. Okay? And then try this one. 17 is five more than twice a number. Now this one's quite a bit. Uh, number. 17 is five more than twice a number. Okay. I see three different portions to this problem. I see just 17 is five more than is a portion, and then twice a number is a portion. So there's kind of like three pieces to this. It's good for you to break up the pieces. Okay? So now I'm going to try to write this. 17 is, is, equal, okay, now this is where it gets confusing. Twice a number, and then we've got five more than that. So what do you think that looks like? Twice a number, and then five more than that. So it's times n what, what times n? Uh, twice twice. Oh, a number. Two times n. Two times n. Plus five. Plus five, because it's five more than that. Okay. Would that be considered a penis? Yes, because you would do multiplying and then adding. Good job. Okay? But anytime you see this two times in, the way the book does it is just two in. When a letter is next to a number, it's known in mathematical world, you multiply. So, again, this would be N7 or 7N. That's how the book would say it. This would be that. This would be that. That would be that. And this one up here would be, instead of two times in, it would just be two in. Okay, so that is the mathematical world. All right, let's do th uh, two problems. Based on this, I'm going to let you help me figure out how to write it. Okay, just have two problems. Okay, if, if five less than, five less than twice a number is... 17, then what is the number? And we're going to find out. I've not asked you this part yet. Okay? We haven't learned how to do this yet. But we 
we've learned how to do this part. So help me break this up. I see three again. How would I break this up? So if five less than twice a number would be broken up. Well, there's two of them broken up into that one. Oh, if five, five less, less than, than, and then five less than what? Twice a number is 17. That's four. Okay, time out. So if we have twice a number, right? Twice a number, and it's five less than that, what would I do? Uh, that'd be minus five. Very good. Do you see why I write this one first and then this one? Because it's five less than that. Okay? Is 17. What is the number? What is the n? It's basically what we've been working on the last... So do we... We actually perform the problem. So you had to know two things on this lesson or this equation problem. You had to learn how to write it. Then you have to learn how to answer it. We already kind of gone over that. So... I'm trying to get the n by itself, but right now it's with the 2, so we're going to leave it for a minute. But can we move other things so that we get our n on this side? Um, yeah. What can I move? You can move the minus 5. Very right? good. We're going to move the minus 5 across here, and so minus 5 becomes plus 5. And that gets rid of that. So then I get 2n equals 17 plus 5. Huh? 17 plus 5. Yeah, which is 22. Good job. Now, this says 2 times One. what equals 22? 12. Right. Almost. 11. Good job. You, yeah. Oh, that's 2 times 24. Yeah, yeah that's good job. So you had to figure it out. Okay. So, 2 times what equals 22? If you can't remember that you just know 2 times 11 equals that, you can take this times 2 so that we can get our n by itself. And when we bring it across, it becomes divided by 2. And then 22 divided by 2 is 11. So n equals 11. So you did a two-part problem. All right, last one. All right, here we go. This one's kind of doing geometry. So here we go. The ma angles marked x and 2x. In this figure, in this figure, the angles marked it in this figure are, you may not know what this word is, supplementary, supplementary, supplementary. What is the measure of the large angle? What is the measure of the large angle? Now, it would help if I drew this. So you can actually see. Okay. The angles marked X and 2X. This angle right here is marked X. And 2X, this right there, is 2X. In this figure are supplement, supplementary. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Do you know what a straight line equals? 180. Good job. That's what supplementary means. So even if you didn't understand that word, you could have looked at this and said, this whole thing equals 180. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to say this plus this equals 180. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I have two x plus another x. How many x's do I have? Two. Two x's plus another x. It probably helps to put a one right here because that x means one x. Three. Yeah, so three x equals 180. All right, and then that says three times what equals 180. So we're going to move this times three divided by three. So 180 divided by three is 60. Yes, okay? So x equals 60. So guess what I can put? 60. 60 right here. Then you do 180 minus 60. Right? 180 minus 60. Or you could have said two times what the x was, and x was 60, right? Mm -hmm. I could have went two times 60, since we know x um, is 60. Either one. Both of them give you the same results. The answer will be 120. And we figured out 
What is the measure of the large angle? 120. That would be our answer. So you had to find out a bunch of answers. We had to come up with this. Then we had to figure out this answer in order to get this answer. So it was almost like a three-part problem. Okay? That's lesson 101.